Hello students, in this video we'll understand the connection between the variation of parameters and the Ron scan. Let's be given two solutions, given y1 and y2, solutions of this homogeneous problem, y double prime plus p of x, y prime plus q of x, y equals zero. We'd like to solve the non-homogeneous problem. We consider now, so I have two solutions of the homogeneous problem, and let's consider the non-homogeneous problem. y double prime plus p of x, y prime plus q of x, y equals a function f of x, which is not equal to zero, okay? And of course we know what to do, we can use variation of parameters, so variation of parameters tells us how to look for the solution Okay, so how are we going to look for the solution? We're going to look for solution y of the form c1 of x times this function y1. I'm going to suppress the x and the y1 plus c2 of x, y2. Okay, that's our variation parameter scheme. And what's the first step in variation parameters? The first step is to differentiate this. And so when we differentiate this, we're going to get y prime is equal to, I'm going to keep the c1s. Now I'm going to drop the x, bearing in mind that c1 and c2 are functions of x, y1 and y2 are functions of x. So this is going to be c1, y1 prime, plus c2, y2 prime, plus c1 prime, y1, plus c2 prime, y2, right? That's the first derivative. Now, the, the Lagrange method for this problem, for the, this the Lagrange method, states to take the terms with first derivatives of c and set them equal to zero. So that's what the Lagrange method says for variation parameters. We're going to set those terms equal to zero. That makes our calculation for y prime a lot easier. Let's continue our calculation with y prime. So what's y double prime going to be? y double prime is going to be c1 prime y1 prime plus c uh, c1, that's a c1, y1 prime prime plus c2 prime y2 prime plus c2 y2 prime prime. Great. Now we're going to fill this into the original equation. So now my original equation is going to be, I'm going to say this exact same thing over here. So C1 prime Y1 prime plus C1 Y1 prime prime plus C2 prime Y2 prime plus C2 Y2 prime prime. That's my Y double prime. Seems like a lot, but it's not that much actually. P of X and then my Y prime is going to be C1 Y1 prime plus C2 Y2 prime. And then finally, plus q of x, q of x times what? Times c1, y1, plus c2, y2. This all has to be f of x. That has to be what my differential equation is going to be. So I plug it back into my differential equation, my non-homogeneous differential equation, of course. Plug it in over there, and this is what I get. Now, lots of stuff is going to cancel out. That's the whole point of this method, right? And so now let's carefully look at this. So if I look at this term over here, that's a c1, y1 prime. That's a C1, Y1 prime times P, and that's going to be a C1, Y1 times Q. So those three terms are going to cancel out since Y is a solution to the homogeneous problem and C is uniformly is the same in value in all those expressions. Likewise, I have this value over here, C2, Y2 double prime, C2, Y2 prime with a P, and C2, Y2 with a Q, right? So those uh, squiggly terms are going to cancel out as well. And so actually all that's left are just these three terms over here. So now I have a second relationship that I have. My second relationship that goes along this, with the Lagrange relationship is that C1 prime Y1, C1 prime Y1 prime plus C2 prime Y2 prime has to be equal to f of x. So now I have two equations, two unknowns, as is standard when we're doing the method of variation of parameters. And now I can solve this using Kramer's rule. So what will Kramer's rule tell me? So over here, Kramer's rule is going to tell me the following. It's going to say that C1 prime is going to be the determinant that we get when we replace Y1 and Y1 prime with 0 and F of X. So I'm going to have a 0 and an F of X over here. And then the second column is going to be what? The second column is going to be just Y2, Y2 prime. Over what? over the determinant of the coefficient matrix. So what's the coefficient matrix going to be? It's going to be y1 times y2 prime. That's the Ronskin. y1 prime, y2 prime, Ronskin. So I'm going to divide by the Ronskin of y1 and y2. Beautiful. 
And analogously, C2 prime is going to be what? It's going to be y1, y1 prime, and then 0 f of x, all divided by what? All divided by the Raskin of y1 and y2. Okay, excellent. So now this is easy to solve because what does this tell me that C1 is? C1 is going to be an antiderivative of this thing over here, right? So this implies that C1 is going to be an antiderivative of what? Of y2, y2, let's just call this of z, f of z over the Ronskin of z, dz. And of course, this is going to be negative since it's the cross limit over there. So it's going to be a negative for the C1. What's the C2 going to be? The C2 is going to be an antiderivative of what? Of y1f. So it's going to be a y1 of z, f of z, dz, over the Ronskin of z. Okay? And now we can put this together. As you typically will see, you'll see what is your particular solution over here. Well, your particular solution is going to be what? Your particular solution, y particular, is going to be one antiderivative. I can put this from like 0 to x if I want, from just like say a to a, up to x over here. Of what? Of, well, c1. Of course, this is of, these are antiderivatives, right? So we can get the whole particular solution. And I'm going to have a y1 is deterministic now. So I'm going to have a y1 of x times this negative y2, and then this y1 times this y2. So I'm going to have a f of z. And then times what quantity? Times y1 of z over here times y2. So y1 of z times y2 of x. Plus, or minus rather, y2 of z, y1 of x, all divided by the Ronskin of z, dz. So I found a particular solution by using variation parameters, and the Ronskin's in the denominator over here. So in other words, this whole method works assuming that y1 and y2 are linearly independent. So we need to new, so that's just a remark. Remark. We need y1 and y2 to be linearly independent for the Ronskian not to be equal to zero and for this argument to work. And we use Abel's formula there too, because the Ronskian, if the Ronskian is not zero at one particular point, then the Ronskian is never zero in an interval near to that point. So I can apply this method in an interval at a point where the Ronskian is not zero, where the functions y1 and y2 are linearly independent. Thank you very much.